US dollar strength continues backed by geopolitical tensions and a hawkish Fed. But how many rate cuts can we expect this year? Hello and welcome back to our channel. My name is Daniela. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at some recent comments from Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. Also seeing how many rate cuts are now expected in markets and of course how that is affecting the dollar and its trading. But before we get into it, please like this video, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. So as I was saying, we've seen some resurgent strength in the US dollar. Now, one of the key factors for that is geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. I don't want to delve too deep into that, but of course, we're seeing that safe haven demand increase, risk off sentiment in markets also increase across the board. And of course, that is on the back of those uh, escalation in tensions between Iran and Israel. Now, as the situation unfolds, it's likely that the US dollar is going to remain supported, uh, seeing that upside momentum if these concerns intensify further. But aside from geopolitical tensions, we've also had some comments from Jerome Powell in the last few hours. Um, we saw him at a US-Canada conference on monetary policy. And he was saying essentially that uh, higher for longer rhetoric from the Federal Reserve is likely to be expected given how monitor, how inflation has remained so stubborn and there's been a lack of significant progress in the disinflation process this year and of course that is expected to see the federal reserve keep rates at the current rate at the current rate for longer and essentially saying they can keep them there for as long as needed. Now, remember, data in the US has come in very strong. The latest of that, seeing retail sales in March come in higher than expected. And of course, that has painted the picture of a strong economy, a robust labor market, but that has also affected inflation. As we know, one of the key data points that central banks have been keeping an eye out in order to start cutting rates has been inflation. And while significant progress has been made from the highs that we saw in 2022, there has been a stall and even somewhat of a reversal of the disinflation in recent months. And of course, that has been keeping the Federal Reserve from being able to cut rates. Not only has uh, inflation stalled, but also, as I said, the data remains so strong that there isn't really any need for the Federal Reserve to cut rates or any reason to justify doing so, which is not maybe not as as um, what we're seeing elsewhere, like for example, in the Eurozone or the UK, where inflation has come down significantly, but also growth has struggled. We have a much different picture in the US and that of course is determining the path of monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. Now, markets are now expecting less than two rate cuts this year. Um, we're seeing, as I said, priced in uh, around 40 basis points right now of cuts. So that is less than two 25 basis point uh, cuts. Remember at the start of the year, it was up to six rate cuts and only a few uh, weeks ago, we had three rate cuts priced in. So um, two seems more likely at the moment, but it can even be reduced to just one. And there's been talk, of course, of potentially no rate cuts this year. Um, and... Uh, even to some extent, some comments about potentially having to hike rates again this year. Now, remember a few meetings ago, the Federal Reserve took rate hikes completely off the table. Um, but there has been some speculation in markets that we could potentially see another rate hike within this cycle. Um, we haven't had much comment from Fed officials yet. So, of course, no way confirmed. Uh, but we have seen, for example, Fed Governor Michelle Bauman, who is actually a uh, one of the most hawkish members of the Federal Reserve, saying that she would favor a rate hike if progress in the disinflation process were to stall or even reverse. So given the recent data we've seen, I wouldn't be surprised if we do start to see calls from uh, some Fed members to, I guess, revise the strategy. But for now, no confirmation, as I said, any rate hikes. We have seen further comments from central bank members saying that they could potentially uh, see no rate cuts this year. Kushkari, for example, even though uh, he's not a voting member this year, saying that a rate hike is certainly not off the table. Uh, and even though it's unlikely this year, it is something to consider if inflation continues to show 
um, progress in terms of resurgence in, in the economy. So there has been, as I said, a lot of speculation about that. Markets haven't really reacted too much to um, specifically Fed, the uh, Fed Chairman Powell's comments recently, especially him saying that rates could be kept higher for longer. Markets already knew that. We've seen the data come out. We've seen the strong labor market, retail sales, growth data, and also a CPI coming in higher than expected and not really following that disinflation path. So it's not really um, being a surprise for markets. But of course, um, the higher spread is supporting the US dollar, specifically uh, against the euro and the Japanese yen. The ECB is now expected to cut before the Federal Reserve. And of course, that will play uh, against the euro and favor the dollar in that pair. So there's uh, been quite a bit of uh, moves in the FX space. So let's jump onto the chart now to see some of these. Okay, so let's kick it off with the dollar. We can see here the strength in the move, that resurgence in that bullish appetite, as I said, driven in part because of those geopolitical concerns driving safe haven demand but also the strength in the US economy and these, I guess, recalibration of market expectations about rate cuts have also been favoring the US dollar. As I said, euro dollar being one of the key pairs to watch out. We've seen that weakness in euro dollar intensify uh, last week. Remember, as I said, the ECB is now expected to cut first. In fact, Lagarde at uh, the meeting last Thursday pretty much priming the market for that rate cut in the next meeting. And of course, that is uh, weighing on the euro and pushing or allowing the dollar to take advantage here because of that higher spread, that rate differential. Um, and this is expected to continue, quite frankly, fundamentally. The path of least resistance looks to be lower. Also, technically, we're seeing a little bit of support coming in just above that 106 level. That just seems a little bit of a technical, uh, I guess, correction or support area. As I said, the bias remains to the downside, mostly on the back of these fundamentals, expecting the ECB to cut first and that uh, spread favoring the US dollar. Um, we could potentially see a little bit of a rebound from here, maybe some appetite from euro buyers to come in. Uh, but again, I expect gains to be limited above this area here. 106.65, we saw some resistance uh, prior this week. Uh, and even though we do have a little bit of bullish appetite this morning, it doesn't seem to be uh, really strengthening that much. The RSI is showing um, signs of the pair being oversold. So again, that could play in favor of some new buyers coming into the market. Uh, but quite frankly, as I said, the path of least resistance does seem to be lower at the moment. Another pair to watch out for, very interesting, is of course dollar yen. We've seen some uh, interesting moves from this pair as well. Now remember, it's less than a month ago that we saw the Japanese bank taking that step forward and actually hiking rates for the first time in uh, a long time. But uh, that doesn't really favor the yen too much, especially against the strength that we've seen in the dollar. Now, the key question now is whether the central bank or whether Japanese officials are going to intervene to strengthen the yen. Um, the problem is that when we saw the Bank of Japan hiking rates, the statement or the announcement that followed essentially guiding markets uh, that there would be no more rate hikes. It was a one and done situation. And of course, the US dollar, the US dollar has been driven higher because of stronger US data. And that has weighed uh, on the Japanese yen's ability to see some strength against the US dollar. Now, for some time, we've seen Japanese officials setting some targets in markets for intervention. In the past, it's been the 152 mark, um, but that was quickly surpassed. Um, the CPI data for March has helped dollar yen push beyond 153. That had now become the new area of attention. And we're now past 154. So there has been talk of are we going to see any Japanese intervention? But also, how much good is that going to do to in the markets? If we were to see it, yes, we could see a small reversal in the short term. But what is the long-term sustainability of this intervention? There really isn't much uh, to say there. And also, 
Will the Bank of Japan risk hiking rates once again and kind of deviating from its rhetoric in order to salvage some of the momentum in dollar yen, even when the central bank has clearly admitted in the past that it is looking for in domestic inflation and, of course, hiking rates would hinder that to some extent. So there seems to be a, a bit of a crossroad here for dollar yen. Is the, are Japanese officials going to intervene? How is that going to affect their search for domestic inflation? And what good is that going to do, if any, uh, in markets? But for now, of course, dollar yen path of least resistance higher. Clearly some overbought conditions, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see any sort of significant pullback just yet. We could see some short intraday retracements allowing new buyers to come in, but of course looking to push even further until we see some sort of reaction either from uh, Japanese officials, from the Bank of Japan, or any further data from the US that supports uh, some moves higher. That is it for today's analysis on the US dollar. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.